insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 61, Artistic Expression. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and I'm here with my talented and creative co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, Maddie? Pretty good. So this is our Artistic Expression podcast, one that we've tried to do, I think, the last four episodes, right? (laughs) schedules circumstances and various things have kind of conspired against us actually getting this one off the ground but uh, we did a lot of prep work for it ahead of time so we have a couple of pre-recorded segments that we're going to be doing here that we did earlier on so tell us about what today's episode is since this really is this was your idea so tell us what this episode is yeah i've had this actually in mind for a while so basically um we've said this before i'm very creative and i love to do different forms of art and i decided um on an idea for this podcast to show off some of that art since i have different versions of art okay so tell us about the forms of art we're going to see today. Alrighty, so there are four main forms of art. Um, the first one we're going to go through is my music form of art. I play the trumpet, and we're going to get to hear and learn a bit more about that. Right. Next up is my writing portion, because I love to make stories and such. You're going to hear a few of my... You're going to hear a bit of my writing... Um, And we'll probably talk a bit more about that. And then the big part is probably my artwork. I have loads to show you, and we're probably going to talk more about how I started doing the art. And finally, we have my creative construction because I'm into Legos, and I built a bunch of um, cool stuff on my own with Legos that I want to show off. Okay. So so what we have is... um your music first, and we do have a couple pre-recorded segments for that. We have uh, some readings from your writing uh, pre-recorded that we're going to show. And we also have um, some artwork of yours that we've scanned that we'll be able to show as well. And then we have some hands-on physical demonstrations of your Lego stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to talk about your music. So let's take a quick break and we'll come back and talk about your music. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Civ Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. So as you mentioned, Batty, you do play trumpet, right? Yep. Now, before we show the clip, tell me a little bit about what got you into into joining band and why you picked the trumpet? 
Well, um, thing is, it all started when I was in fourth grade. Um, we had the option to join band. I remember, I think, I saw, um, when I was just starting fourth grade, like, the assembly and all the instruments that you could have played. And I'm not exactly sure, but I just think that the trumpet just stuck out to me. I'm not sure why, um, but... I just thought that the trumpet was a cool instrument. We had a few other options like saxophones, um, flutes, and clarinets, but for some reason the trumpet just stuck out to me. Um, and I think I actually kind of liked the song that they were able to play. And I don't know. I'm not exactly sure how okay. I really why I really chose it. Well, I do know you mentioned that your band teacher this year had talked about uh, possibly trying the French horn. Yeah. Uh, did you give it a shot? Did you did you try that? Is that something you actually might be interested in in switching instruments? I mean, I'm still trying to debate myself. I mean, it it would be a really cool um, instrument because I've never really heard of anyone else playing it, um, and I definitely think it would be kind of a cool way to express my um, musical talent and um, maybe a fun instrument to learn, but, you know, I'm still trying to figure that out for myself. Okay. Uh, just as a caveat here, I don't have an ounce of musical talent in my body. Um, I do play rock band with you, so yeah. it, I can pretend that I'm musically talented. Yeah. Uh, but clearly your talent from a musical creativity side comes from mommy here. Yeah. Uh, mommy plays the piano, and she used to play clarinet as well. Yeah. Uh, so want to run a clip, let folks take a look at it, and then uh, maybe you can comment on the what we're seeing after after we play the clip yep all right here we go uh madison whalen's musical debut So, why don't you tell us what the songs were? I mean, we can probably recognize two of those. What was that first song you did? The first song was called Buy All Them Cabbage Down, and these were just a few warm-up songs that I was playing in my first few years um, of band. So, um, Buy All Them Cabbage Down was just a repeated song to get us to learn eighth notes. So. Okay. But I thought it was a cool song, and I wanted to sort of um, choose... I decided to choose that as part of the... Um, video and presentation for the podcast so question for you on the trumpet so there's there's three vowels on the trumpet mm -hmm. but you played a lot more than three notes there so how do you get more than three notes from three vowels well there are different ways on how you can use the vowels but the most um but some of the fingerings are the same you just have to put more air into it to get the higher notes ah uh, okay okay so You've been playing for how many years now? Um, well, I started in fourth grade, fifth, sixth, about four years now. And you still like playing the trumpet? Yeah, it's given me some difficulties, and sometimes I want to quit, but I still um, enjoy it, and I, I'm still doing it, so. So what was the biggest problem that you had uh, when you first started playing trumpet? Um, well, the biggest problem I had in the beginning was I couldn't get the notes high enough, and, like, my C's were, like, like, C's are low notes, um, to begin with, but I got them really low, 
Um, but luckily after a few months I was able to get the hang of it and I was able to get pretty good high notes. So you started playing fairly young um, and you're not playing with a special size instrument. You're playing with a regular size trumpet. Did you have any issues holding it? Any issues with finger positioning? Anything like that? Did you struggle with anything because the instrument was too big at the beginning? Um, not exactly. I mean, sure, it was hard to get the fingers, uh, fingerings down in the beginning, but overall, it wasn't that hard to carry or hold. So um, okay. I was able to do that fairly well. So do you think this is an instrument that you want to continue with uh, through high school? Um, I might. I mean, um, it's a good pastime for me. I enjoy playing it. Um, and um, I definitely like showing my creative aspect in more than one way. Now, I know you had some apprehension about possibly joining marching band if you got into high school. Yeah. You didn't seem to be particularly interested in that. Is that something that would... Would if that was a requirement, is that something that would sort of end your your trumpeting? Well, I probably wouldn't do it at school, but I actually own my own trumpet. Um, the school doesn't pay for my instrument. Um, so we actually bought it from one of um, my mom's. Uh, you bought it from Pepe. Yeah, I bought it from my uh, adopted grandfather, and um, uh. Th- and since the school really doesn't need to take it away and I basically own it, I can probably just do it at my own time because if, like, if like I can't do it at school, I can just do it as a pastime um, at my house. So. Okay. Are there any other instruments that you think you'd want to learn other than the trumpet? Um, I am kind of looking into the piano, though. I know only, like, I mean, I know a few songs on it, like, just two, but... Um, I still want to learn more. Um, I like the instrument, um, and I just, I don't know, I've always just been a fan of the piano. Okay, well, maybe we can look into getting you some piano lessons. Maybe. Uh, anything else you wanted to add to your musical artistic expression? Um, hmm. Well. <laughs> Rock band all the way, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I do like playing the drums on rock band, and I've actually, like, when I was actually in music, I actually had my band teacher as my music teacher during that cycle. Um, I had actually done a, one project with some other people on drums, and I've learned a few things from that, like um, sort of how to do a drum roll from rock band. I've learned how to keep the good rhythm. Um, right. So I might even do drums. I really don't know. Okay. Well, you are like a renaissance girl here, aren't you? Why not? Uh, So that was all we had on the music side of things. We'll come back and we'll talk about uh, a little bit about your writing and then uh, a few readings from you of your writing. So uh, you like to write. Yep. Okay. So... I can't take any credit for your musical talent, but I think I can I can stick a feather in my cap, my proverbial cap here, and and say that you know you might get some of your writing skills from me because I do enjoy writing. Tell us what you like about writing. Um, I like with writing mainly because like you can create your own stories and you can have like. I've learned a lot of stuff in ELA about story making and I've actually done a, I've actually done a few, um, writing pieces from ELA and... So what is ELA? ELA is English, eh, English Language Arts, um, it basically is, um, I guess reading in a way. Okay. Um, you learn um, different um, literature. Um, you learn different types of literature. You learn different text structures of literature, um, and you uh, learn a l- and you. Um, oh my God! Sorry. Um, you learn um, uh, different forms of writing. Different styles. Different styles. You you learn how to edit your writing yeah, uh, and you basically learn the arts of storytelling yeah in addition to obviously learning the english language right <laughs> sure well I, that's the primary goal right yeah um 
so what we're going to play for you now, I think we've got three uh, excerpts in the in the segment. I think so. Um, and these were, uh, one was a story that you wrote. Um, and the story itself was, were these your original characters? Uh, yeah. And what inspired the story? I don't know. Like, for some reason I've all, um, I don't know how I developed this tactic, but I've always been, I've always been a storyteller. I love telling stories. I love to go in depth in a lot of things. You know, uh, I talk a lot. Um, and I like to talk about stories. And um, when I started making characters, I started telling, like, a story about them. And, like, how, um, like, a bit about what type of person they are. How they turned out to be that person. What their relationships are with others. Okay. Um, and then they started going into more depth with, like, short stories and little descriptions and stuff like that and backstories um and then at some point i got three characters and i ended up making deciding to write an entire book about them okay so that's the first one uh the second one was well i'll tell you what how about we play the segment and then you can give us a breakdown afterwards all righty all right here we go uh, Madison Whalen, spoken word. Sure. This is an excerpt from The Dimensional Demons by Madison Whalen. Chapter 1. Meet the Girls. Nora, Monday, January 18th. It's hard to describe how I got to this point. I'm in a normal middle school, I have the two greatest friends in the entire world, and I'm no longer bullied. getting bullied. The only problem is that I don't know my parents, and the fact that I came from, another, from a different dimension. I know, I know. This is starting to make no sense. Let me explain. I came from another dimension, or an alternate universe, as some people call it. I don't remember anything from my dimension, because I was only a year old when I was sent to Earth. I do know that the people who inhabit it are either possessed by a demon or an angel. I also know that I was supposed to have an angel in me, but I was taken from my parents and corrupted by a demon. Once I was taken back to my parents, I was found to be too dangerous for their world. I was then sent to this dimension, known to my planet as the Earth Dimension, and I was put at the doorstep of a man and his wife. Once they saw me, they took me in and treated me like I was their child, although I had some differences. First off, I'm a Nico, meaning I'm a human cat. Second, since I have a demon inside me, whenever I would get angry, the demon would come out. They tried to act normal, but inside, they knew that they, I knew that they feared me. When I was ten, however, I got into a car crash with them. I was the only survivor. I was taken to an orphanage and was either feared or picked on by the, ki by the kids there. I was... went to an I w since then, I went to a normal school, and I met my closest friends. The first was Alice, the second, Gwambi. Start. Do you remember if you doodled as a kid? Did you ever think it could turn you into a young artist? What I just described is exactly what happened to me. I'm sure we've all drawn something at one point, at one point in our life. Nonetheless, I was the same. It was a habit for my toddler brain to pick up a crayon and start drawing. I remember one day when I was waiting for my dad to pick me up from my daycare, I decided to draw a picture of him. I remember grabbing a piece of purple construction paper and grabbing crayons to draw him. As a three or four year old, I wasn't some Picasso. I know that I drew his head so big that I needed to make the body smaller. I, of course, made smaller doodles later on, but the next big thing in my art journey was making comics. I started doing this because I had just gotten a Spongebob comic and really liked the idea of making comics. Once starting fourth grade, I began making comics. Some were based on Spongebob episodes and others were completely original. 
When I was in aftercare, everyone there would read my comics. I made comics from fourth grade to fifth grade. I stopped at sixth because I wasn't fond of the art style and I really didn't have time to draw them. Even though I didn't make comics, I still tried to perfect my art style. During the summer, since I wasn't very social and I hated doing sports and physical activity, I would sit and draw in my sketchbook. When I learned that my friends at my summer camp liked to draw, we started a small art group. When I started seventh grade, I was pretty solid in my art style. Occasionally, I would take out a piece of paper and start making a character. This was, a, this was, of course, when I had free time. Sometimes I would finish, and sometimes I wouldn't. Whenever I need to draw something for class, I always use my artistic vision. This is how I began making art. This is an excerpt from The Devil with a Heart, A Halloween Tale by Madison Whalen. It was a chilly fall night. The wind made the branches sway, and leaves fell on them were falling. Looking out her bedroom window, Midnight was preparing to sleep. It was the night before Halloween. The night before Midnight and her family would go out and terrorize everyone around them with all the other ghouls and ghosts around. Although she scared people her whole life, Midnight never really felt joy from it like her family did. She sat at her desk, turned on her desk lamp, and started writing in her journal. She had gotten the journal for her 10th birthday and was writing in it ever since. Most of her entries were about her feelings and thoughts of scaring others. She never told her family this because she would be seen as a letdown. Her family had been scaring mortals for centuries and no one complained. When she finished, she closed her diary and hid it under her desk, turned off her desk lamp, and went to lay in her bed. She began to play with her tail, something that would normally calm her down and put her to sleep, any time except tonight. She was too worried for the next day. She remembered the first few times that she scared mortals. She did it with her friends, Dolly and Regina. She didn't mind scaring, not until she saw the effects it had on the mortals. As she closed her eyes, Midnight thought of all the terrorized faces she would see the next day. Okay, so there were three um, stories. Sort of. Well, the one, the one was more of a, uh, I guess, autobiographical story of you wrote for school. That was a school assignment. Well, technically, but, um, the last two ones were school assignments. Right, but I'm referring to the one about the middle one there yeah. about how you got into art. Yeah. Um, so, so you write fiction, and you you do a very good job of writing fiction. But you write nonfiction as well. Yeah. Um, what do you think is your favorite style of writing? Um, I'd like to say my favorite style of writing is mainly like. I guess folktale, realistic fiction, stuff like that. I like doing more fiction than nonfiction. I mean, I do have some nonfiction um, writings, but um, my favorite one to do is fiction, uh, mainly because you um, get to make up your own story instead of nonfiction, where you're describing, like, um, fact or providing information um, that other sources probably have. I just okay. like being original, I guess. And typically, where do you turn for your inspiration for your stories? Um, I guess um, um, where I turn my in my uh, inspiration. Um, I guess I would go with um having to make characters like i use i make characters and i use the character design to um tell their story basically like there are certain factors of a character that i use to tell their story and then i go into a little more depth um using my own creativity and imagination um combined with all the factors that i can get from their looks okay 
And what is the typical process of character creation for you? Do you come up with a backstory first? Do you come up with what they look like? Do you come up with um, where you want them to go in the story? What? How do you go about creating your characters? Well, my um, the first step would be to, I guess, uh, create the character itself. I have an app called Gasha Life that I use, and... Um, uh, I can make the characters there. It's very easy to make them, and I can choose their names, and I can choose what they look like, and what clothes they wear, and just um, all the other factors that go into that. And okay. then um, I use that as the inspiration for the story. Like, then I go into more of their backstory. Like, how did they end up looking like how they are? What does their personality seem to be with their looks? Um, I basically then use the character design to sketch out their entire backstory, personality, traits, stuff like that. So you, you make the character reflect their personality and then you build their personality based on how they look. Yeah. That's an interesting approach. And then if I feel as though, um, they I like the character a lot, I end up taking them and making it into a story like the first excerpt that you heard, um... Um, of the recorded versions. So when you go about creating a story, how do you how do you build the story? Is this something where you come up with what you want the end goal of the story to be and then you tell a story? Or do you start telling a story like a day in the life and then the story kind of takes on a life of its own? How does What's the anatomy of a story for you? Well, I think very early, lo very early on when I first started like actually drawing um i definitely think i had i didn't find the end goal until and i just started making the story as and i just basically played it by ear by that from that like i just described the story and then i put events in and then i just like i i never had an end goal for a story um i just basically start the story and see how it goes from there Okay. Almost like a, kind of a serialized version doing comics or something like that. Yeah. Um, do you draw on real life when you build your characters and your stories? Is it experiences that you've had? Is it people that you know? Um, I do have like... I do have a tendency of making my characters go into middle school like me and sort of go through similar, similar, uh, similar difficulties as me. Um, honestly, I think that's really the only factor of real life I have because I just love making so much fiction just because, like, ugh, I, it's like a little escape from reality, I guess. Okay. And, and honestly, when I write, that's sort of the same thing for me, too. Um, yeah. so that's, that's kind of cool. Uh, anything else you wanted to add to your writing repertoire? Um, hmm. That about sum it up? Pretty much, I guess. All right. Well, we'll take a look at your artwork, uh, when we come back after a quick break. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. So let's talk artwork. So one of the big things that you seem to do on a regular basis 
is art. What kind of art do you like to create? Um, I like to create characters. That's one of my main things for art. Um, I like to create different characters. I like to create characters that have um, different looks and different personalities and different stories to them. Like I said, like I said in the writing portion of the podcast, I create the characters first and then base their personalities, um, traits, and backstories and stories on them um, from just the character design. So you've been creating characters for quite some time now. Yep. Um, some of these are borrowed from other uh, properties. Some of these are your own. Um, I'm assuming the artwork we're looking at is a mixture of everything. Yeah. So what mediums do you generally tend to work in? Are you pen and paper? Are you uh, colored pencil, pastels, watercolors? Do you paint on canvases? What do you? How do you like to create? Well, that's the thing. Like, for... Like the majority of my artwork, I just do pen and pen. I just do pen and pen, paper and pencil. Okay. What you, I don't know what to say. Yeah, um, paper and pencil. Paper and pencil. You sketch. Yeah, I don't really color my artwork in very much, and when I do have to color them in, they don't look as good as they would when I don't color them in. Um, I don't know, but I've gotten more used to coloring the stuff in and I hope to try and actually get more used to it as time goes by because I don't just want to um, just be um, making artwork that's just black and white. Right. So, so, but you know, the first thing that we're going to look at here happens to be black and white. Uh, This is a early comic that you dig. You were a big SpongeBob fan, I assume. Yep. Uh, so this is a SpongeBob comic. Um, how old were you when, you when you created this particular one? Well, if anyone paid attention to um, the middle segment in the writing um, that I showed, I was talking about how in fourth grade, I you guys had gotten me a SpongeBob comic that I was really into because I was into SpongeBob so much then, and I'm still a big fan of it now and um, I had loved the one idea in the one main comic in it and I decided hey why not recreate it so I was in fourth grade and I basically made a recreation of that comic and then it started a whole chain of hey why don't I make other Spongebob comics just cuz and then that um, started basically my entire art journey so the other SpongeBob comics that you were making, they were custom stories of your own, were they not? Well, yes. Um, some of the some of them were based off of other episodes. I just changed around a few ideas, but the majority of them are um, my own original stories. Um, I basically created them, and I even created my own characters, and I had like a whole thing going on, um, and. I was really into it, and I had actually done it for about maybe one or two years. I don't know, but it was a pretty lasting one, and I have lots of of them right now. So tell us a little bit about the style that you did these in. Were these the original style of SpongeBob, or did you add your own flair to these? Well, um, characters that look similar to the original characters are basically SpongeBob, Plankton, um, Squidward, and, well, I think that's kind of it. The rest of them I had to put in my own unique style because it was, for me, it was a bit hard to make the other um, designs. So Patrick looks a bit more round than he should. Um, Mr. Krabs just looks as though he um, is just more square than normal. Mm-hmm. Um, and Sandy um, has a flatter surface of her face instead of the 3D version. Um, and I th- and Karen went through a few of her own designs, and I ended up actually giving her more of a digital face in the future in the future of these comics and I actually really liked how I did that. So so you took the original style of the comics mm-hmm. and then kind of added your own flair to them. Yeah. I um, mean, 
Some characters look similar and others look, um, I mean, they're all recognizable, but they have different styles to them in a way. So this one here, we actually do have, you've colored this one here. Yeah. Uh, is this a, a story that you came up with or is this a excerpt from an existing SpongeBob episode? Well, um, I had actually had a few of these drawings. Um, some of them were based on other ones, but this one was a completely original one. Of course, there was the SpongeBob trick-or-treating episodes, and you've seen um, SpongeBob and Patrick in those costumes, but that specific scene that I drew, it was completely original. Um, SpongeBob and Patrick didn't dress up as Mermaid Man and, Bar and Barnacle Boy in the SpongeBob episode. Um, and they didn't go to Squidward's house, and he didn't say, go away. Like, right. that whole scene didn't even exist. I just took existing ideas from certain um, parts of different shows and decided to combine them together. Okay. And then, you know, you've kind of evolved beyond doing spongebob at this point haven't you yeah um i guess once i stopped doing the comics i started um improving my own art style so this is this shot that we have here is a very early example of your style and, and i'm familiar with what your art style is now um, and these appear much more rounded but it's the same kind of theme i would say yeah now, were these inspired by Gasha Life? Um, no, I hadn't gotten Gasha Life at that point, but um, some of these characters are recognizable from other things. The thing is, um, at this point I was in sixth grade and I had a friend and we played with some like toys and we had a whole storyline with that. And at um, some point I decided to draw some of these characters. Some were based on... Um, kids tv shows that i was watching at the time i i see some teen titan figures in here yeah we actually i actually it was because i had a bunch of teen titan toys and i brought them into school and we like played with them and then it came up with this whole storyline and um we actually had watched this one netflix series um and that was basically the main inspiration for most of this okay um and yeah, that was pretty much... And, of course, I had my own original characters. Like, we created, like, a bunch of different characters, like Alice, Princess, and Max. Okay. So the characters that we have on this sheet here, these are all your original characters? Yep, none of them were really um, taken from anything. We just, like, had that one... Um, mo um the first... Um, the middle character and the only... And the boy were both um, forms from, uh, were different characters based off of the one Netflix series. Like, Kari was a sibling of one of the characters, and Sheen was the son of, the, of another character. Okay. But Princess was totally original, um, and I just made her like that. Now, do you have any backstories or anything that you have written down on any of these? Because I know you've... you've developed a lot of backstories on um many of your characters my curiosity is is have you ever actually committed those backstories to um to handwritten uh, you know stories or or anything well yes the very first um excerpt from the writing we actually um introduce the three main characters we have um Gwemby, Alice, who I mentioned before, and um, my character, whose name used to be Maddie, but I changed it over to Nora since I actually have three, um, two friends who, um, those characters were basically, those were the main characters that they played. Alice was, um, one for my friend Elena, um, uh, Gwemby was, um, an, was not an original character, but one that my, um, friend Lindsay always wanted to play and Maddie was basically the cat human form of me um, which evolved into having a completely different name than mine because the other two had different names and I kind of didn't want to have the same name for my um, character so I changed that up and a bit about her looks as well okay 
So this excerpt that we have here is from a comic that you did. Um, this was a um, do-it-yourself comic book package that you had gotten as a gift at one point in time. Yeah. And this one, you did a whole storyline on this, but you did this in a particular style. What style did you do this in? Well, um, at this point, I had been a fan of the um, a YouTuber named who was um, titled as The Odd Ones Out, and I decided to make a comic book um, sort of based around that, and I also based it a bit more about my own life, but um, so the character designs are similar, um, just the names are different, and um, just the art style was a different form than, it w than I was used to, um, but uh yeah i um i just wanted to do it because i was a big fan of the youtuber and um i decided basically to make some fan art i guess so this one is an excellent example of art meets storytelling um, and you've obviously colored this one in as well yeah so this one's telling us a story while you're still doing all the art. so it's kind of a a nice combination of the two of these and you know it, uh, certainly it, when you look at it from a career standpoint you could certainly be a you know comic book artist you know if that's something you're interested in moving forward yeah but i notice you don't do the style much anymore is there any particular reason oh uh thing is this is similar to um the art style um this is just Sorry, so this was, that art style was actually similar to the art style that, um, the YouTuber actually did, and I decided to have that, but put my own twist into it, making sort of myself as a character, and play, basically playing out a bit of my life in that. Uh, I see, okay. Interesting. Yeah. So this is kind of an example of your more contemporary style of art here. Mm -hmm. uh, who is this character? So this was a character. So at some point I decided to put myself to a small challenge, basically making animals into humans. So I had chosen a sloth for this one. And um, this is basically, um, since sloths are sort of slow and tired, I made this basically a lazy college student in a way. Um, I gave her a baggy hoodie with a cute little sloth um, hood. I made her sort of look like a bit of a nerd with glasses. Um, I made her also cute and I decided that she'd sort of be that kind of college vibe, wearing sort of like pajama-like clothes. Um, she's wearing sweatpants and holding a math book from her um, college work. And I basically just tried to make her look a little, like, slightly slow and maybe a little tired, but I just thought that there was was kind of a cute style, and I kind of figured it would be a nice look for her. So this style gets us into your more angular faces now. Yep. Uh, where earlier on when you were doing these, they were, they were more rounded. So now you have a very distinctive style that you have here now that's... I'm not an artist by any stretch of the imagination. To me, these look very similar to a form of anime, Japanese anime. Yeah. Um, Do you get inspiration from that style of art? Yeah, sort of. Like, um, I was... I kind of like the style of anime, and I kind of wanted to... Um, once again, put my own little twist into it, and then I started drawing faces like this, um, and it slowly evolved into my now more natural um, style that I use um, currently. Okay. Um, so, do, do you have a lot of characters at this point? Uh, yeah. Um, why? <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, um... I just like making characters. Some of them were based off of Gosh Life creations, and some I just drew on the fly. Um, so tell us about this character here. So this is actually, I actually decided at some point to make um, versions of Spongebob characters if they were human. So this, if you can tell, is Sandy Cheeks. Um, I put my own little spin on her with my own art style at this point. Um, and I definitely think she looks very cute. Um, I love her hairstyle. Um, although I could probably do um, much more now. Um, 
I just love how I could put my own little spin on it, and um, I was able to create a good um, character design. So, do any of your characters reflect you or your personality? Um, I mean, some I have made um, reflect some parts of my personality, but they definitely don't all reflect them. Um, some reflect my shyness, some reflect my creativity, um, some reflect, um, I guess my sarcasm in a way, um, but... What, what does this character reflect? Um, this one honestly doesn't really reflect, um, much of me. This was just one of my Gosh of Life characters that I was really into at the time. Her name is Jackie, and she's actually a robot. Um, she has a whole backstory to where, like... Of course she does. Of course, yeah. Most of these characters do have a lot of backstory, others not so much. She has one of those, like, in-between backstories. Not the most detailed, but definitely, like, more to tell than some other ones. Basically... Um, she was created by an evil scientist who wanted to take over the world, um, and, um, his assistant didn't want that to happen, so he reprogrammed Jackie to hopefully destroy her creator. Sadly, it didn't work, and she was put, and she was put into an academy, basically, for people who didn't fit in society, aka the people who, um, well, the people who were complete maniacs, I guess. Okay. Well, that's certainly a good backstory. Mm. Uh, anything uh, equally interesting about this character? Well, this character, I liked, um, at some point I had um, the idea to make, to basically merge two characters together. He's, um, Steven is a prime example of that. Um, I took um, two existing characters, um, a character named First Prize and another character named, um, uh, arts and crafters and I merged them together to basically make um, Steven and Steven is a robot like his like first prize but he also has the same creativity as arts and crafters um, if you noticed he has um, his sweater and I actually made it look like he made it himself this also goes into um, his sort of personality and backstory he's the one that represents my creativity because he made the sweater all by himself um, he has a few stitches on it um, some glued googly eyes some pieces of fabric sticks to it and his own little design and I wanted him to seem like he was creative but also sort of shy so he sort of represents both of those personality traits in me. Um, he was definitely one that more represented me than any, than anything else, but he still represented um, arts and crafters and first prize because both of them, because arts and crafters is both shy and creative and um, first prize is pretty shy. Okay. So is there anything that you are looking to do to uh, challenge yourself artistically at this point? Well, I have heard of, like, different art challenges, um, and I might want to try them out, like, different challenges, like the three color challenge, that's a pretty popular one, because I've gotten more into color now, I might actually just, um, and that might actually get me into thinking, like, okay, how do I create a character with just three colors? Like, I can think of, okay, what is this character's style, what is their, like whole idea what what's their favorite colors like that right. kind of thing and when you when you obviously you've done several different styles of art at this point in time when you want to learn a new style how do you go about learning a new style well it starts off by me thinking uh, that um i'm getting tired of my of the current style i'm doing and i sort of want to change it up a bit since it's not really appealing anymore and i want my art to look better um i don't know exactly and I find certain ways on how I pick it up, like, um, if I, like, I don't really know how I pick up different designs, like, I have this design and I might, like, round off the face or I might change the hairstyles that I do, um, but overall I think, um, once I get, it's, I, I think right now it's sort of hard to say exactly how I change styles. Like, how I changed from the SpongeBob style to the more rounded one, I think was mainly because I started making characters like myself and my friend Lindsay in them. Um, and 
that was more rounded. Then I started going into more detail with the body and the hair. Um, I basically just um, like find imperfections in the art. Like so, it's what, it's you. Your art style is is a matter of refinement. It sounds like yeah. You don't just wake up one day and decide, okay, well, I'm going to do impressionist or I'm going to do modern art. You know, you don't just have like a light switch just turn on and, and just decide you're going to do something different. You you start out with a style and you continue to refine that style and that's how you evolve. It's an evolutionary process. Yeah. Interesting. And where do you, I mean, obviously you're very character centric in your artwork at this point. Where do you turn to for inspiration for your characters? Um, I like to watch, um, like, I actually have this one YouTuber I'm look, um, I watch now, um, and she does a great job with, um, showing her different ways of art styles, and I definitely, um, like watching her because she, um, not only does, she doesn't even do characters, but she does, like, different animals and, like, different themes and... She um, is the one who actually got me into painting on canvases again. Um, she was the inspiration behind that. She's the inspiration for me to try and add color to my art, hopefully making it look a little better. Um, and she's a great artist, and um, I think she right now is my inspiration for it. Okay. Well, I think that was pretty much everything we wanted to hit on the art side of things uh we did have creative construction uh coming up was there anything you wanted to add for your artwork side mm. nothing i don't know i think we covered most of it though i think we talked it all out all right so we'll come back and we will sh talk about what your creative construction side is So you work with Legos. Yep. Um, I had several Lego projects, larger Lego projects, mostly Star Wars, well, yeah. all Star all Wars. All Star Wars. Um, I don't do Legos. Uh, my fingers, unfortunately, are not suited for it, nor do I have the patience uh, to do that. I don't even like putting furniture together. I, I hmm. turn to mommy for furniture. Yeah. Um, so whenever I've gotten a lego project um almost always gift it to me from mommy unless i picked one or two things up uh they turn out to be money making opportunities for you i contract you're my lego contractor yeah uh, i contract out to you for constructive purposes um but you do more than that you do more than just read the instructions and put stuff together um you have a very creative aspect why don't you talk a little bit about how you are creative with legos what what you like to do with legos well i like legos because there's so many different parts and so many different colors and when you merge them together you can make like things that are unimaginable and things that you never thought you could have made um that it's sort of similar to like sculpting but instead it's slightly more controlled with a bunch of different parts okay so what we have to show you today is what's been an ongoing project for you, right? Yeah. Um, it was, was it a challenge that you found online or did you just come up with the idea of doing color themed rooms? Well, at some point, um, I had, um, found like, um, this one YouTuber I was watching at some point, um, they um, were building with Legos, and there were also, like, ideas on making characters um, with only, like, one version of a color. And that had got me into thinking, hmm, what if I used one color builds for leg with Legos? Okay. So let's take a look. Let me get your close-up on there. So tell us what we're looking at here. All right, so this is um, part of the compliment. Um, I call it an apartment complex of one color rooms. So at the bottom here, we obviously have purple and the characters somewhere in here. <laughs> Don't mind me. 
Uh, here's the character. I, so your characters are even, even color themed. Yeah. Um, I use um parts of other characters that I have from other Lego sets, and I make them color themed to um their specific house and. I have different ways on making them, like this one has a bed, window, if you can't tell, um, there's also a table, a chest, um, and lots of other little stuff. Um, I like to put um, different types of furniture with all the types of um, blocks I have. So, um, and her name's actually Violet, I named a few of them based of on course, of course, their Violet. colors. Yeah. Well, you, sure, you can't call her Rose, right? Nope. Okay, so uh, the next floor up is the um, brown floor. Uh, this one was um, one that I had a lot of animals that were color-themed to be brown, so I ended up deciding to make that. And uh, some of these builds are slightly more unique than others. Some don't have beds, some just have couches and other pieces of furniture, and some have, like, um, other pieces that are, that most others don't have. Um, eh, eh. Uh, this is the character... This is the character for this one, and she has a lot of animals. She has a dog, a hamster, a monkey, a horse, and a rabbit. Uh, yeah. Uh, some of them have a lot of pets, um... And some just don't have a lot. So, so let me just stop you there for a second and just ask a couple of questions. So, sure. the so the furniture that you have in there, you've got beds, you've got uh, couches, you've got chairs, you've got tables. Were these pre-built Lego pieces that you had when you put them in, or did you build these custom? I decided to make them custom. Um, most of them are custom. I don't know if there's any like ones that are completely like intact pieces not that i know of um but most of them were just built by myself because i'd like taken all the pieces apart okay so how long does does it typically take you to build a room like this this size depends how much i have how much patience i have for it like i can build one at fern and i can build one in like 30 minutes or if i just procrastinate on it i can it can take up to a day to finish but um typically they're quite easy to make as long as you have all the right parts so that's a that's a good segue into my next question there is when you're going to build these color themed rooms where do you get the parts for it are you just going through a box of legos that you have and pulling out the parts or are you going out and, and buying packs offline or at shows and stuff well, it's a little bit of both. I have an entire thing of uh, Lego parts that I don't have any other use for, and I have a bunch of colors from them. And when we do go out to shows, or when we used to, um, um, there would be, like, Legos, and I would um, occasionally buy, like, a pack because I needed a certain color for it. Um, so, yeah, most of, some of them are from that, um... And others are just ones I already had. So outside of the apartment complexes, are there any other freestyle projects that you like to do with Legos? Um, I'm build with the instructions. And I, um, and I decided to start doing this because um, I like the idea of it. And I wanted to um, see, and I wanted to challenge myself, basically. Okay. Um, that was all I had. Uh, well, I wanted to show you a unique room. Okay. Um, this section, oh, uh, uh, we'll just put that. Just put that off to the side there. There you go. I wanted to show, um, a unique apartment complex, which is actually a two-room one in a way. Oh, it's a duplex. Okay. In a way, yeah. Let's see what we got here. Let's make sure we got oh the camera. Oh my god, the orange looks red. <laughs> so oh, well, wow, yeah, look at that. Okay, so the reason behind this is mainly I didn't have a lot of red parts and I didn't have a lot of orange parts, so I decided since they're similar colors, I decided to combine them into an entire room in a way. So I have the two different characters, and I'm thinking like they're roommates and they don't really get along very well. Um... I was able to make, like, a kitchen, a bed, and a little living area with a little stuffed lobster for the red. And with the orange, I really didn't have a lot of parts, so I just had to have a window, a bed, a little 
thing here. I don't know what it is. And a balloon arch, apparently. <laughs> yeah, I had this, and I thought this was a really cool idea, so I just added it in. There's also a shelf here and a little table with two chairs. I had to honestly get a lot uh, pretty creative. There wasn't, there wasn't, there was like a lot of space to fill with this and such little space and right. such little like pieces. Well, you know, that's a good example of what you what you do when you don't have that much to work with. Improvise. Exactly. So I think that was all we had to talk about today. Uh, we will come back. We will get your closing remarks and shout outs and call it a day. Go for closing remarks. Um, it's kind of hard to do crawl closing remarks now but i'll think of something so i guess in a way show your creativity in some way if you have creativity built up inside you like me um find a way to express it um and um you can use your own original ideas but still have inspiration from other sources just make sure not to copy anything if put an idea into your own form and please don't copy anything and try to express your creativity in any way okay yeah those, that's gotta be one that's not gonna be the best <laughs> <laughs> i think you did fine thanks um but uh Kudos to you for your artistic ability. I think uh, I think you've got wonderful talent. Thank you. Uh, continue doing what you do. And uh, if folks want to reach out to us, you can subscribe to our podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, all the major podcasting. You can shoot us an email at uh, comments at insightsintothings.com. You can get our audio podcast at podcast.insightsintoteens.com uh, or you can get audio, video, YouTube, transcripts, and everything else on our website at insightsintothings.com. If you have your own artwork that you'd like to uh, shoot over to us, um, I think it would be kind of cool to highlight it in a follow-up uh, segment later on. Uh, feel free to email it over to us. We'd love to showcase it. Yeah. Um, we stream live on Twitch, uh, five days a week at twitch.tv, uh, slash insights into things. And we have two other podcasts. What do we have? We have insights into entertainment, um, which is our weekly podcast hosted by you and mommy and insights into tomorrow, our monthly podcast, our monthly podcast hosted by you and my brother, Sam. And I think that's it. Yep. Thanks for joining us. Thank you as always. That's another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye.